Hey, what's up, Liron here. Thought we'd jump right into business once again. In this video, I want to teach you what I think is one of the best tips for avoiding overwork. And this is especially true for uh, when you're going and moving past that just beginner stage of mixing things and kind of feeling a little more confident with that. And I want to show you this on the video on the screen. This is my study that I did of John Yardley's beautiful artwork. I called it How to Paint Like John Yardley, and you can check that out. I will put a link in the description box below. It does highlight, however, one of the biggest issues that lead to overwork. And maybe if you were looking at this video from the beginning of this one, uh, you kind of caught on to what I'm referring to. So look at the way I'm using the brush here. Uh, and I'm using a small brush, relatively small. This was a Princeton back when I was using these not so good brushes. Now, though this one was decent, I will admit. Now look at how I'm filling in those areas. And it really does feel a bit like I'm filling in those areas, right? And look at my brush. I'm mixing a little bit of paint and then I come back and I kind of fill in the shapes. Here is my, probably one of my biggest tips for avoiding that overworked look. Don't do what I'm doing here. Instead, what you want to do is avoid that dabbing. Look at how much I'm dabbing every single shape here. Look at how many brush touches I do just to get one shape. And look at that small, small little movements like this, like small little dots and, and, and pieces and bits, just small, tiny touches. Instead, what you want to do is perhaps even use a larger brush and just fill in that area more effectively, which is something I've shown you in a different video in a few videos in the past. But look at that. Look at how I'm filling in that shape. It's so inefficient and it's small and it's really working in smaller areas. And the problem with that is you do run the risk of having very patchy washes. And I find this to be, to be the key reason for overwork. Now, let me give you another example uh, for how this applies. For example, when you're doing foliage and you're painting each and every single leaf uh, individually and it's just a lot of different brush marks, this tendency to paint each and every small detail with foliage, with hair, with textures, with bricks on walls, all of that you can paint each and every detail, but will it provide you with the result you want? Is that the thing that really matters? Is that the thing responsible for the look you're trying to achieve? Most of the time, it isn't. So here's what I'll urge you to try. Use fewer brush marks, fill in the areas a little more effectively, mix a lot more in advance, use as wet of a paint as you need to. Let me switch over and show you a bit more of a positive example, a more recent one of how I do think you should do this. So the previous example was actually from June 2018. Well, this one is from August 2021. So a three year gap. And look at how I'm treating those bridges and how I'm painting them in. This feels much more like I'm painting them rather than filling in an area with paint. Look at that brush mark, long brush mark, just one, economical. Now, I'm not saying this is the only way of doing this. And of course, some very complex shapes will require you to work a little more slow, a little slower around them, which is something you do see me do here um, on several occasions analyzing the shapes and slowly building them up. But for the big shapes, the clear shapes, you want to be able to get them in in one go. The, the, I think the key ability here is to fill in shapes effectively with a brush. And that's the uh, another exercise that I've shown you how to do. And I think it's very effective. Uh, all you really have to do is take a piece of paper, draw a bunch of shapes and try seeing if you can fill them in maybe each of them with one brush mark or two. And you actually work the brush around the edge of, edges of the shapes. I'm not showing you on purpose again, because I did do a couple of videos on that. But um, and I may put some snippets later on in editing, not sure though. But the, the idea of filling in the shape, the, working around its edge in one brush mark, and then continuing it, right? If it's a large area, if it's an initial wash, which on purpose I don't show you now, yes, of course, you'll work top to bottom, bead, everything, just slowly, you know, work around those highlights. But for these small and more manageable shapes, this brings so much more life to them. Uh, it makes them fresh. It makes them flowy. And in the beginning, you'll have a hard time doing this while, you know, maintaining the right value or the right, like you'll think about, okay, I need to be effective with my brush. Then maybe you'll mess up other aspects. That's part of it. And it will, uh, it is an aspect that will improve with time. Look at this shape, the putting in the background much more effectively. I don't need to paint each and every small shape, especially around the edges 
uh, of the shape, right? Later on, maybe you'll fill in the blanks a bit, you know, with smaller details. But in any case, I hope that makes sense. That's all I have for you today. Just wanted to really put that quick tip out there because I've been asked about this quite a few times in the last two weeks or so. Like, how do I avoid overwork? There is a lot that goes into overwork. It's also about your timing, wet and wet. It's about many things. But first and foremost, try whenever possible to get a wash done in fewer brush marks, right? Again, not the end all be all. There are plenty of ways of doing things. The more water you use, the more leeway you have in terms of your retouching areas and you won't destroy everything. Uh, but this is a good starting point, a good thing for you to look into. Are you doing a million brush marks that aren't really useful and filling in the shapes very slowly? Or can you get them in with one simple mark or one or two or three you know, four instead of 50, right? That's that's the key difference. Go five brush marks instead of 50. I hope that makes sense. If you want to learn how to paint like me, be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. Link is always in the description box below. There is a Christmas discount, so you'll get 15% off if I'm not mistaken. Check it out. Link there if you still haven't subscribed, uh, haven't joined. And one more thing, uh, watercolor realism course is going to be done real fast super excited it's going to be done soon and I, I really can't wait to share it with you it's going to be huge it's going to be better than frustration free in terms of realism and I do want to give you a method a real method for following it from start to finish so that you don't have to feel confused at any point I am trying to improve the content here on the channel so definitely hope I hope that it is felt let me know in a comment down below if you want me to do something differently trying to have higher quality show you everything I'm doing, including the palette and the paint, trying to jump straight into the, the real deal instead of, you know, too, too long intros and outros like this one, which is getting too long and so on. I hope all of this helps. Like, subscribe, share if you can, and I will see you in another vid real soon.